Get solar panels to save your energy bills, they said. We'll pay you handsomely for your export, they said. Well, that looks like it's all about to change. E.ON, the third biggest energy supplier in the UK, has slashed its smart export guarantee tariff rates from a market leading 16.5p per kilowatt hour and impose more changes that leave those of us with solar and or battery storage systems in the lurch. In this video, I'll go through the changes, why the likes of Oxbus NG and British Gas will probably follow suit, what you can do to reduce this impact on your solar investment, which companies are currently offering the best tariff options right now, and what the future of export rates might look like. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know I switched to E.ON from Octopus NG in June 2024 for their low off-peak import rates of under 7p per kilo hour and export rates of 16.5p per kilo hour, crucially both fixed for 12 months. It's been great and definitely the right decision at the time, importing cheap electricity off-peak and exporting all that solar back to the grid during the day. But that looks set to change. I've been with E.ON for nearly 18 months, joining on their next drive V4 tariff at 6.9p per kilo hour for 7 hours off peak, which then dropped to 6.7p per kilo hour in late 2024. There have been several changes to their next drive import tariff, with their most recent V11 version increasing that off peak rate to 7.5p per kilo hour and dropping the duration of these cheap rates to 6 hours, but it's still fixed for 12 months, so it's still pretty good. Up until now, E.ON's export rate has been fixed at 16.5p per kilo hour for all solar export all day. However, E.ON have recently moved the goalpost quite substantially. New sign-ups to this export tariff will now be paid 13p per kilo hour. It sounds pretty good on the face of it for a fixed 12-month tariff given the current climate. Until you realise that those of us that are on smart import tariffs like NextDrive have essentially been shunned from this export tariff you'll now be paid a measly 6p per kilo hour. Oh, and that might change, as the tariff is now variable. Oh! And if you're thinking that's a lot of numbers to compare to see what it might mean for your savings, you're right, which is why I've created this spreadsheet, which you can quickly use to run the numbers and work out your savings, payback and ROI for up to three tariffs at a time, based on your custom consumption data and solar storage system specs. And you can now download it for free for a limited time via the link in the video description box below. All I ask is that if you're finding this video useful, to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also completely free, and it really helps keep me motivated to make future videos just like this one. If you're not with E.ON and you're currently laughing at those of us who are, let's look into this a bit deeper. Why export rates are changing and why you probably won't be laughing for too long. UK wholesale power costs rose sharply in early 2025. The International Energy Agency, IEA, reported UK wholesale prices to be up approximately 40% year on year in the first six months of 2025, due to colder weather and lower wind output. Retail prices also ticked up. Eon's higher off-peak rate and reduced hours reflect these rising supply costs and profit pressure. Even after raising rates, 7.5p is still far below the current price cap of 26.35p per kilowatt hour. You may have noticed this yourself. Solar panels are popping up everywhere, meaning midday grid supply is growing rapidly. The UK added approximately 2 gigawatt peak of solar in the first half of 2025, exceeding the total capacity added throughout 2024. This solar boom means frequent midday oversupply and when solar is abundant, its market value falls. E.ON's new lower export offering reflects this. Essentially, why would a supplier pay a flat 16.5p per kilowatt hour for electricity that is only worth 1 to 2 pence per kilowatt hour or less on the open market? With no current government requirement to link SEG to consumer prices, E.ON and other energy suppliers have little incentive to increase export rates when retail prices rise. In fact, Ofgem's NG price cap data show rising network and policy costs, which push up consumer tariffs, but export rates remain decoupled from this. But how low can it go? And would they disappear entirely? The lowest export rate NG companies can legally offer in the UK is just above zero, with some suppliers currently paying as little as 2p per kilowatt hour exported to the grid in 2025. So now we know why NG suppliers are reducing our export rates, what can we do to protect our investments? 
If you're a solar only owner, i.e. you have no battery, rather than exporting everything you can during the day, you can instead try and consume that solar as it's generated. However, that's incredibly difficult. A typical UK home without a battery storage system and without deliberately shifting its electricity usage can self-consume around 25-45% to of its solar generation. And is it practical? It's highly unlikely you're going to be or want to be at home on sunny days during peak solar generation times, just to use some electricity. And as we know, we get our fair share of shading, usually after you've just plugged in trying to use up that excess solar. Damn you clouds! Meaning you'll likely end up inadvertently drawing some peak rate electricity from the grid. Owners of solar and battery storage systems can drastically increase their self-consumption figure by soaking up this midday solar generation for later use during the high demand evening hours between 4 and 7pm. With the addition of a typical home battery system and smart usage, self-consumption rates can increase dramatically, often reaching 70-90% to or more. These owners can also charge their batteries off peak and discharge this cheap electricity back into their homes in the winter months when solar is less forthcoming. With that all said, what should you do now? One of the reasons I switched to Eon from Octopus Energy is their fixed import and export tariffs. So I've got a little bit longer to run under that fixed protection. And given that these are separate tariffs, mine expire at different times and yours may too. Going into winter, there's not going to be much solar kicking about. And any that there is will soon be consumed by your home or battery. So it's your import tariff I'd be focusing on right now. But who's currently offering the best tariffs? If like us you have solar panels, battery storage and an EV, then I'll start with the suppliers with most attractive EV tariffs and corresponding export tariffs. Importantly for all these tariff options, the off-peak hours must apply to all electricity consumption rather than just charging an EV. It goes without saying that these smart tariffs require smart meters. All of these rates I'll go through are for us in the northeast of England and your peak rate and standing charges may differ slightly. First up, and no surprises, Octopus NG and their Intelligent Octopus Go and Go tariffs. To get on the former, you'll need to have a compatible car or charger. If you don't want to spend a thousand pounds or so getting a compatible charger, then it'll be standard Octopus Go for you. And before you comment that you can get more than six hours off peak electricity on Intelligent Octopus Go, be warned Octopus NG is cracking down on customers who are deliberately gaming the tariff to get more than the allowed six hours of off peak electricity each night as EV Nick covered in his recent video. For us, they're offering an off-peak rate of 7 and 8.5p per kilowatt hour for 6 hours and 5 hours respectively, with a peak rate of 29.88p per kilowatt hour and a daily standing charge of 58.21p for both, fixed for 12 months. Exported electricity is paid at a reasonable 15p per kilowatt hour, but be aware this is a variable tariff and can therefore go up or down at any time. Next up is Good Energy with their EV charge tariff. With this we would get 6.6p per kilowatt hour off peak for 5 hours with a peak rate of 28.93p per kilowatt hour and a higher daily standing charge of 67.19p, again fixed for 12 months. Like Octopus, as long as you are on one of their import tariffs, Good Energy will pay you 15p per kilowatt hour of export. Again, this is a variable tariff. Finally, we have British Gas. This gives us 9p per kilowatt hour off peak for 5 hours, with a peak rate of 29.88p per kilowatt hour and a daily standing charge of 64.69p. But be aware this is a variable import tariff and is therefore not guaranteed. As with the others, if you're on one of their import tariffs, British Gas will pay you a chart topping 15.1p per kilowatt hour of export. But like its import tariff, this export tariff is variable. If you do choose to join any of these energy suppliers, and want to bag a £50 referral reward, I'll drop a link to those with new customer referral rewards in the video description box below. If you do use the channel's referral link, then thank you, it really does help keep it going. What about if you have solar panels and or battery storage, but no EV? Then I suggest you play around with the numbers on the free spreadsheet for some of these options here. But what does the future of export look like? Is it all doom and gloom, or is there a glimmer of sunlight ahead? We may see more time of use or dynamic export offerings, such as Octopus Agile and Flux, which have been around for a few years now. And other real-time tariffs will become more common, rewarding customers who can time exports via batteries or EVs to meet the grid's needs. 
The best strategy, should we see a widespread decline of export rates, will be to maximise self-consumption or use batteries to play energy arbitrage with the grid. As we've seen, homeowners like you and I should compare tariffs. In particular, combining an EV import tariff with the highest SEG export rates may yield more savings than those without an EV. For those of you considering investing in new solar and battery installations, a word of caution. Some suppliers offer solar and battery installations themselves with the offer of higher export rates. This may appear tempting, but I'd urge you to get several quotes, including from local installers with a good reputation, run the numbers yourself, and look at the small print. And is it even worth getting solar panels anymore? Persistently low export prices could dampen small-scale solar attractiveness unless paired with battery storage. On the other hand, it incentivizes battery adoption and smarter grid integration. Since we've had our heat pump installed, we're using a lot more electricity, as predicted and running out of off-peak stored electricity in the evenings from the battery. Given the fall in export rates, it's even more likely that I'll be exploring expanding my battery storage capacity. If you want to be notified when that video lands, you know what to do. Looking ahead, regulators may revisit export incentives, but as of late 2025, there's nothing concrete on the horizon, and the upcoming budget from Rachel Reeves could quietly reshape some of the current green benefits, so it's one to watch closely. The reality is no one has a crystal ball, yet most analysts agree that export payments are likely to stay subdued. Unless there's a shift in policy, suppliers don't have much incentive to lift export rates, and the trend so far has been towards variable tariffs rather than fixed ones that hover in the low double digits. Eon's recent export rate changes may well have triggered the start of a wider collapse in seg payments, and it's likely other suppliers won't be far behind. I'd love to hear what you think though, have I got it completely wrong and do you see seg rates bouncing back or is this the new normal? Let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to download your free spreadsheet and access the referral links in the video description box below if you're switching NG providers. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.